The Battle of Lake Changjing in 1950 was an important fight during the Korean War, not only because it was one of the largest battlefield confrontation between the United States and Communist China, it's also regarded as the most brutal example of a war by violence, casualty rate, and weather conditions. The Americans awarded a total of 95 medals to its soldiers, the second most medals ever awarded in U.S. military history. Even though the Chinese Communist Party declared victory for driving the Americans out of North Korea, it later quietly revoked the numbers of the regiments participating in the battle and for decades never spoke about it. Hello everyone, welcome to my show, I'm Lei. Despite the fact that 150,000 of the CCP's elite troops failed to eliminate 30,000 American troops while suffering 10 times more casualties, the Chinese Communist Party recently turned a disastrous military operation into an epic patriotic war movie for propaganda purposes. This is obviously to prepare the Chinese public for a possible war in the future with the Americans over Taiwan. From 1949 to April 1950, Mao Zedong secretly integrated more than 50,000 ethnic Koreans from the Chinese People's Liberation Army into the North Korean People's Army, or KPA, and these Chinese soldiers became KPA's main force. The KPA soon expanded to more than 90,000, twice the size of the South Korean Army. The Soviet Union provided the North with weapons. With both China and Soviet Union backing him, on June 25, 1950, Kim Jong Sun invaded South Korea and occupied Seoul three days later. The United Nations decided to send troops and 16 countries joined the war. The UN troops were led by American General Douglas MacArthur. General MacArthur led the U.S. 10th Army and was quickly forcing his way to the Sino-Korean border. Kim Jong Sun asked for help from China and the Soviet Union. Stalin asked Mao Zedong to fight the Americans and he would provide the weapons. But there was a problem. Because the U.S. was part of the U.N. troops and China couldn't declare war against the U.N. and didn't want to declare war against the U.S., Mao played a trick. He called the Chinese soldiers volunteers and the Chinese troops thus became the Chinese People's Volunteers Army. 230,000 volunteer troops entered North Korea on October 19th, the day the UN and South Korean forces captured Pyongyang. But the Chinese troops were unable to stop the Americans and were quickly losing ground. Mao Zedong then rushed his elite troops, the PLA 9th Corps, into North Korea. His plan was to eliminate the 20 to 30,000 men of U.S. Marine Division I in the Changjin Lake area. The PLA's 9th Corps consists of the elite 20th, 26th, and 27th Armies with 150 to 160,000 men. They were mainly southern soldiers from the area around Jiangsu and Shanghai and were the main forces prepared for attacking Taiwan. On November 1, 1950, the 9th Corps rushed from Shandong province to the northeast and received orders to enter Korea. The northeast military region rushed prepared 50,000 winter coats and boots for them, but in order to get to North Korea quickly, some of the trains did not stop to receive the winter gears. In order to quickly advance into North Korea, some troops discarded heavy winter coats, hats, and so on. For example, Peng Fei, the commander of the 180th Division of the 20th Army, ordered the entire division to throw away their winter gear so as to advance lightly. These commanders did not seem to realize that the troops would soon be entering the Alpine Zone and extreme weather was about to hit. The 9th Corps quietly crossed the Yalu River. On the first day of entry into Korea, more than 700 people dropped out due to frostbite. Soldiers had to wrap towels around their heads, drape their bodies in blankets or quilts, and wear whatever could keep out the cold. In fact, an American pilot saw the Chinese soldiers heading south from his plane, but mistook them for fleeing Korean refugees. 
The region saw the worst winter weather in a hundred years, with temperature plummeting to minus 30 to minus 45 degrees Celsius, and the snow was 40 centimeters or 16 inches thick. On the night of November 27th, with no air support and limited artillery support, the Chinese attacked the Americans. They sought to overwhelm by numbers and within days surrounded the entire UN force, which was mostly American troops. Their mission was to completely wipe out the Americans. However, in minus 30 to 40 degree weather, what was most deadly to the ill-equipped Chinese soldiers was not the battlefield. By the Chinese Communist Party's own statistics, three entire companies of officers and soldiers froze to death before the ambush, and the Chinese movie glorified these soldiers as heroes. One American corporal from the 7th Regiment saw bodies of Chinese soldiers that were blue and purple, and wondered why they were supplied with arms but not prepared for winter. He said, if it wasn't for the freezing of so many Chinese soldiers, those hundreds of bodies would probably be those of the U.S. Marines. In the end, 105,000 American Korean troops were able to evacuate safely. They also took with them 98,000 Korean refugees, 17,500 vehicles, and 350,000 tons of supplies, as well as all of the sick and wounded. The Battle of Changjin Lake resulted in roughly 2,500 killed and 5,000 wounded for the UN troops, most of them U.S. Marines. The exact number of Chinese casualties isn't known, but the Marines estimated 25,000 Chinese troops were killed and 12,500 wounded. Other estimates put total Chinese casualties up to 60,000. After the war, Song Shilun, the Chinese general who led the Battle of Changjin Lake, submitted a review to the Central Military Commission on December 11, 1950. He concluded, We didn't fight the battle very well. We not only failed to destroy the U.S. Army's 1st and 7th Divisions, but suffered huge attrition, seriously reducing our combat capability. A 2014 People's Daily Online article confirmed that Liu Bochen, one of the Communist Party's founding marshals, once praised the U.S. Marines. In the Battle of Lake Changjin, an entire regiment of our troops surrounded a U.S. Marine division, but failed to annihilate nor crush them, and paid ten times the price with casualties, and eventually allowed the Americans to withdraw entirely and take with them all the wounded as well as weapons and equipment. The biggest irony is that the war heroes that the CCP movie now celebrates didn't die from battling the Americans. They died from cruel and nonsensical decisions the CCP military leaders made. And the worst is that they weren't even fighting actual enemies because China never declared war with the United States in Korea. Historians say the loss of its elite troops at Lake Changjin prevented the CCP from attacking Taiwan in the 1950s. It's amusing that the CCP is promoting the very battle that decimated its best troops, which had been reserved for taking over Taiwan for a possible war with Taiwan now. Luo Changping, a former journalist who worked for Beijing News and a financial magazine, posted on Chinese social media Weibo mocking the movie and questioning the legitimacy of the war. His Weibo account was banned. Police took him into custody under criminal charges on suspicion of infringing on the reputation and honor of war heroes. Others who raised similar opinions also had their social media accounts shut down by the authorities. A Chinese newspaper reported that the film producer is bringing the movie to the American and European markets. I really hope the propaganda movie doesn't come here. It would be terrible to see a film that glorifies the CCP's killing its own soldiers and Americans in America. Wouldn't you agree? Let me know what you think. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.